do you remember a time where you saw something so crazy, so awesome, that you just started asking yourself the question, how did that happen? And then whether you realize it or not, you set yourself on this journey, depending how crazy that thing was, on trying to find out the answer. Whether it's in, you find it in a book, um, that's one thing. Other options include designing some sort of a test where you start messing around with things until you figure out how it happened again, you know, on your own. That's called designing a fair test. Now, you, whenever you do design a fair test, it always starts with a problem or a question. And the key word here is it's got to be a fair test because it's, if it's not a fair test, you're not going to find the true answer. It all starts with a problem or a question where you start wondering, what is going on? That is so cool. And you can't stop thinking about it. After that, after you start having this, this thing in your mind where you're trying to figure out what's going on, you got to understand something. To be a fair test, you were allowed to change only one thing during an experiment. Let me give you an example. There's hockey sticks out there now that bend. They're made of carbon fiber material. And they bend like this. Here's Stamkos. He's taking a slap shot. And the sticks literally bend that much, if not more. And when you buy the stick, it has a rating on them. There's a number that tells you how much it bends. Some sticks bend more than others. Okay, now we got to figure out here. Let's, let's think about this as a problem. What's going to shoot the puck harder? Stick A where there's more flex, in other words, more bend, or stick B that has less flex, less bend. I'm going to take these and I'm going to test them out to figure out the answer. So I start with a problem. Oh man, that is so cool. Look at that flex. That's going to shoot the puck harder? Really? Oh, I don't know. I got to find out. Now you start testing more flex versus less flex. That's the only thing that you're going to be testing. Everything else stays the same. You're going to use the exact same stick type. They're both Bauer sticks. That's the company name. They're both going to have the same weight. You want them to be pretty close. Otherwise, if one of them shoots the puck harder, you might say, well, maybe it wasn't the flex. Maybe it was because it was heavier or maybe because it was lighter. Okay. So you want to make sure they're the same weight. You want to make sure that they're the same length. Okay, because let's say one stick shoots the puck harder. You don't want to say, oh, well, no, maybe it was the flex or maybe it was because it was longer. So, so you don't say that. Make sure they're the same length. In that way, it's going to be fair. You want to make sure it's the same shooter. Let me ask you this. Let's say Steve Stamkos shoots with the less flex. Let's say he's got the less flex. And let's say myself, I take the one with the more flex on it. Chances are, if we go out there and we take slap shots, I'm going to lose miserably just because he's a better shooter. Okay, I don't stand a chance against Steve Stamkos. He's going to blast that puck way harder than I can ever dream of shooting the puck. Does that mean that these sticks are going to be better, the one that he uses? Does that mean it's the stick that's doing it? No, then you're going to be like, well, it's because, uh, well, maybe it's the stick, but maybe it's because he's just a better shooter. Now, if Stamkos, he uses both sticks and he's the only shooter testing both of them, that's going to be much more fair of a test. We want to make sure the test is done at the same time every day. You don't want to have the results saying, well, maybe it was because it was more flex. That's the one that shot the puck harder. Or maybe it was because he shot it at night when he had more energy. And in the morning, uh, he didn't, yeah, so you know what? Make sure it's all at the same time so you rule out those factors. All of these things here are called variables. Variables. Remember that word. All right. First, make a hypothesis. And this happens before you even start the experiment. Your hypothesis is a guess as to what's going to happen. You need to be able to be in a position where... You don't know what's going to happen. If you know what's going to happen, it's not a hypothesis. If you know which stick, if there's like results out there that tell you what stick shoots it harder and you already know the answer, then it's not a hypothesis. You have to not know the answer to make a hypothesis and you have to explain why. 
So it's an explanation to what you think is going to happen during an experiment. But the key word is an explanation. Here's mine. I think that the stick with more flex will shoot the puck harder than the stick with the less flex. So it's going to shoot it faster. Maybe not hard, but faster is probably a better word. Now I got to explain why. This is because I'm familiar with how elastic bands can whip objects. You know, when you have elastic, it whips it. So the more flex a hockey stick makes, the better the whipping action and the faster the puck is going to go. That's my explanation. I'm kind of relating it to a whip, an elastic. The more whip, the more elastic shot, the, the faster the puck is going to go. That's my prediction. That's my hypothesis. All right? So remember this word hypothesis. It has to have an explanation as part of your guess. After that, let's keep things in mind here. Don't forget this. You need to repeat the test many, many times. Don't do the experiment once because whichever stick wins, you just might have had a lucky shot. Do it over and over and over again until you're sure one of them is the winner. And even more importantly, make sure the shooter knows how to shoot a puck properly. If you get somebody who's never held a hockey stick, never shot a puck, um, and you get him to test those two sticks out, he's not going to know how to use those sticks. So he probably won't generate a proper whipping action with the puck. You're not going to get a good answer. You're not going to get good results. Make sure the shooter knows what he's doing. Now results and theory. These are the next two things that come. So, results are the answer. This is what you get after you do the experiment. Let's say, and this is true, more flex did indeed make the puck go faster. This is true. They've done the tests, they've gotten the results, and the pucks that have been shot with more, the, the flexy sticks, the ones that flex more, do indeed go faster than the less flex. Um, so now we can come up with a theory. This is kind of like a rule now. We've done the tests. This is the rule. This is kind of the, the real answer. This is the truth that has come out. Hockey sticks that have more flex will shoot a hockey puck much faster. That's the theory. So we started with a problem. We went to a hypothesis. From the hypothesis, we did the tests. We made sure we kept everything the same except one thing. And from there, we got an answer, the results. We took those results and we turned it into a theory that we can now claim and say is true. Hockey sticks have more flex, we'll shoot the hockey puck faster. Now let's take a look at this. Here's an example question that has nothing to do with hockey, but it's going to test your understanding of this lesson so far. Which of the following is a hypothesis? I want you to read these three, these four I mean. Decide which one's a hypothesis. Stop the video even and look at them more carefully. Assuming you did that, sneaker A, let's look at the answers here. Sneaker A will help you jump higher than sneaker B. Is that a hypothesis? No, because there is no explanation. No! It's not a hypothesis. How about sneaker A will help you jump higher, but only in the mornings after a healthy breakfast? Is that a hypothesis? No, because it doesn't explain why it's going to make him jump higher. Healthy breakfast, well, that's because it's a healthy breakfast. It has nothing to do with the shoe. No! How about sneaker A will help you jump higher because the bottom of the shoe creates more compression? Absolutely. See the explanation? Compression. The bottom is going to compress. And when it compresses, it's going to go pow, like a spring and it's going to make you jump higher. So there's some thought. There's some thought. There's some explanation. There's some brain action going on here. How about D? Sneaker A will allow you to jump higher because I saw it happen once before when a basketball player did it on TV. No! 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 And you know why that is. Because if you saw it done on TV before, you know the answer. That means it's not a hypothesis anymore. Remember, for a hypothesis, you can't know what the answer is. It has to be a pure guess based on something you have no idea of what's going to happen. How about this question? Which of the following is true about designing a fair test? Is it A, only one thing is allowed to be changed unless you feel is it important to change two things? No! 
Never. You're only allowed to change one thing no matter what. How about B? Make a theory before making a hypothesis. No! Because hypothesis has to come first, that's your guess, with an explanation, and your theory comes at the very end once you know what the answer is. No! And of course C is no, you should only perform an experiment once to see what happens. You never do an experiment once because it could be a lucky guess. It could ju you could have got just lucky. Let's say the one with less flex shot harder. Could have just been a lucky shot and it went harder. So you want to do the test over and over again. How about D? Change only one variable and keep everything else the same? And the last question. What is the proper order when conducting a fair test? Is it A? What's the proper order? Do the results come first? The theory, the hypothesis question, test it. Is it B? You can read that. C and D. You figure out the answer. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, we're back. Let's check it out. We know that every experiment, every fair test has to start with a question or a problem. So that means A and B are automatically... No! No! Both are wrong because they don't start with a question. These two start with a question. You got to be wondering first, hey, what's going on? That is so cool. How did that happen? That has to come first. And then what comes next? It's not theory. Theory comes at the very end. It has to be D. Question, hypothesis, then you do the test, you get your results, and then you get your theory.